Today is a special day, and uh, today uh, we have a very special guest. It is our beloved Shamarani Didi. Um, she is um, she is very dear to, to me, and uh, I will tell you something in short about Shamarani Didi. I think most of you all know her, but still, um, she has graduated from the Music and Art High School in 1964. And her spiritual master is uh, <clears throat> His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivintashwami Prabhupada, the founder Acharya of ISKCON. <clears throat> and of, he was a very uh, world famous preacher of Krishna consciousness. And Srila Prabhupada taught her the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. And um, since 1966, she has painted over 200 paintings for Srila Prabhupada temples and books. And um, and also, um, Shamarani uh, Didi has also, um, in 1970, uh, 1967, uh, Srila Prabhupada made her the first, first art director of his ISKCON institution. And um, also in, in 1977, when Srila Prabhupada departed from the vision of the world, uh, Shamarani met um, uh, uh, with Srila Gurudev Bhaktivinta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And she continued also the mission uh, with paintings. And um, in order of Srila Narayan Maharaj, Shamarani again became the art director to complete like a 12 gorgeous, gorgeous line drawings for the famous book of Divine Poetry Gita Govinda. And she has made several paintings, beautiful paintings. And also all of you, almost all of you have a Seva Kunj painting in your home. So that is the heart of Srila Gurudev. So um, uh, I invited her maybe uh, to tell the, the deep meaning behind the paintings and uh, why she painted that and what is the mood of Srila Gurudev. And also her uh, pastimes, uh, also the pastimes of uh, Srila Gurudev in relation to Shwami Maharaj and also in relation to her. So she can share what she has, all the jewels that she has uh, in her heart, she can share with us. Welcome, Didi. So you can, uh, nice to have your darshan. I hope you can hear me. Dhanavad Pranam Shashikala. She is so happy, to, yes. so happy to see you again after so yes. many years. Yes, I'm so happy to see you. And Shamarani Didi is very dear to Shiva Gurudev, Shiva Narayan Maharaj, uh, uh, Prabhupada, and Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Maharaj. So she has so lots of jewels in her heart. So please share that uh, to us and bless us with it. Agyanam Timiran Dasya, Gyananjana Salakaya, Chaksuran Militam Yena, Tasmai Sri Gurave Nama. Gurave Gaurachandraya, Radhikaya Tvadalaya, Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya, Tada Bhaktaya Namo Nama, Yang Pravrajanta Manupeta Mapeta Krityam, Dvaipayeno Virahaka, Taru Ajuhava Utre di tan mayataya Taru vobanedos Tang sarva bhuta ridayam Muni manatos me Bhaktiya vahina Aparada lakshay Chiptas Jakamadi Tarangamadye Kripa Maitang Sharanam Prapadyang Rende Namaste Sharanaravindam Tavoivasmi Tavoivasmi Najiva Mitambina Iti vigyaya radhe tam nayamam charanantike. First, I offer my unlimited obeisances. 
in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Dikshaguru Dev. Nichilila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Astotrasat Shri Srimad Shilabhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada and the same unlimited obeisances in the dust of the lotus feet of my most worshipful Shikshaguru Dev. Nichilila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Astotrasat Shri Srimad Shilabhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Chila Bhakti Vigyan Parati Goswami Maharaj. To our Param Gurudev, Chila Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Goswami Maharaj, and Chila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, and to all of his divine associates and all the very sweet, wonderful assembled devotees. So there's already a few mistakes in what um, Shashi Kaladidi said. I have no jewels. I only speak from rote memory. I have no heart and no love. And therefore, that was why I uttered the Mangalacharan prayers before speaking, calling for the uh, mercy of our Guru Parampara, our gods and goddesses, so they can fill in all the holes that will be in this presentation. And by their mercy, some bhakti may emerge. Also, Srila Gurudev said to me in 1993 that I am not like you. You read something, you speak it, and then you forget it. So that's me. So after that disclaimer, uh, under by the request of Shashikala Ji in her letter, I'll be speaking about um, what Gurudev shared about the moods in the Seva Kunj painting, which he, uh, which journey he began me on by requesting me, can you paint my heart? And then so many um, instructions upon instructions uh, created the eventual details in the painting. So which is Gurudev's heart. And then she also asked me to explain the moods in this painting just behind me. This is the original of Kunj Kirtan. So the moods of this painting in relation to Srila Gurudev. And the third request was to tell something about the activities of Sri Raman Manjari, who is Srila Gurudev's form in Krishna Lila. And then finally, last but not least, something of the relationship between Srila Prabhupada and Srila Gurudev in terms of their history together since 1946 and also their uh, mission together. So we'll start with what I first mentioned, which is the mood of the Seva Kunj painting, which is just behind Shashikalaji. And as I said, Gurudev began by saying, can you paint my heart? And then he showed me a, a picture a painting done by one Maturavasi, which is about the same size. The Actually, the original is quite big. It's uh, like three feet by five feet. And he said, this artist did the painting under my instruction, but he didn't capture the mood and Radha and Krishna looked too old. I am not at all satisfied. Then he asked me to if I could adjust it, I said, if I adjust one part, then the whole thing, the other parts will look different. So then finally he asked me to paint the whole thing and uh, giving me the details like um, what Radha and Krishna are thinking about. They're actually both 
experiencing what's called in Sanskrit, Kila Kichita, Kila Kinchita Bhav, or seven contradictory moods of uh, smiling and weeping and uh, rejection and flirting on her part and um, being ashamed and smiling and weeping and begging on his part and both in, this is a particular type of seven contradictory ecstasies. So Gurudev actually acted out just like our Srila Prabhupada acted out um, some of the personalities in the paintings that he requested from me, like Lord Nishringadev and uh, Krishna playing the flute, Srila Prabhupada posed. And similarly, Srila Gurudev posed for Krishna with his hand out, begging Radharani, what more can I offer you? I've already put my prized possession, my flute at your feet. So please be merciful to me. Forgive my offense. I'm burning up in the fire of separation from you. Place your lotus feet on my head and uh, show your liberality um, and make me happy. Soothe down that burning sensation. Um, Gurudev told me that hundreds of thousands of pastimes are in this one picture. Radharani appears to be rejecting, but at the same time, uh, her expression is her eyes, her face is away, but her eyes are looking towards Krishna and she can see him because her veil is so thin and translucent. Um, Gurudev explained that this is the mood of all Rupanuga Acharyas, that um, real Sharanagati in that absolute realm is why should Radharani surrender to Krishna, he should surrender to her. And why should she weep for him and search for him? He should weep and search for her. And whenever Gurudev spoke, because just like when I was painting the BBT paintings for Srila Prabhupada, I would listen to his lectures the whole time I was painting. And similarly, when I was painting this Seva Kunj painting, I would be listening to Srila Gurudev's early 1990s lectures because the painting uh, took from mid, uh, uh, late 1992 to early in 1993. So I would hear all of his lectures on Vallapakus Manjali, uh, two of which explained the features in this painting. One particular pastime was that Krishna was concerned that Radharani lately is being a little bit too uh, submissive and cooperative. This doesn't give her the greatest pleasure and it doesn't give me the greatest pleasure. So what can I do to um, evoke her usual preferred left-wing mood of uh, no, no, and uh, contrariness. So not only did he come late for their appointment, that is he was supposed to come to her kunj at night, he came in the morning, early in the morning, that was already enough. But then when he saw her, he said, oh, my dear Chandra, as though he forgot that it was Radharani 
and thought that she was Chandranani, but then caught himself in the act in the middle of the name. And then he pretended to catch himself. Uh, Chandra Anani. Anani means face, his face as beautiful as millions of moons. So she said, that was it. I don't want to have any more relationship with you. You can just go back to Chandravali or wherever you came from. Never speak to me again. So her Sakis were trying to encourage her. He was just a little bit late. And even when he's with the other gopis, he can't but think of you. So what to speak of when he's with you? So she said, all right, I'll forgive him, but he'll have to paint my feet, which is exactly what he wanted because her feet are composed of Madanakya Mahabhav, the very highest ecstatic love for Krishna. Far, far higher than anyone else's love. And that enchants Krishna uh, to so much want to be at her feet. So when he was painting, um, painting her feet, he was thinking, well, me and my name are non-different. Nam and Nami are one. So if I paint my name there, then I can always remain there. So he began writing with a brush with red lac uh, on her feet, bottom and a little bit on top. But as soon as he touched her foot, immediately his heart began to tremble. And then his hand began to tremble. And so what was created was an art. Srila Gurudev told me that we can just imagine if the Supreme Personality of Godhead is writing something with a trembling heart and hand, what kind of art that will be? So when he told me to write that, Krishna, 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 all over her feet, um, people, he didn't want people to be able to recognize that it was Krishna because it was too trembling. He said, but don't make it heebie-jeebie, means all congested. So I made it sort of like Krishna in Sanskrit letters, but not clearly. He said only no one would be able to see his name on her feet. Only those who are most dear, like the Manjaris, could read that this is actually Krishna's name. Another uh, pastime that Gurudev mentioned in relation to this painting is again, Krishna came very late. And this time, Srimati Radhika was sarcastic because that's the nature of her left wing bhav uh, of Madhya. It's uh, not very, very feisty like Lalita's who's more, who's extreme left wing, but there's rejection, there's sarcasm. And so, so she said, oh, you look so beautiful because what she was noticing was something that was not exactly a reality. That is, as soon as Krishna looked at her, he immediately became so absorbed in her beautiful lotus face that even without touching her face, he got the signs of her face on his face as though he was kissing her. So her lipstick, which is uh, made with the juice of bimba fruits, although she already has bimba fruit like lips, um, she doesn't really need any makeup, but her lipstick went on Krishna's um, eyes or cheeks and her mascara, her cudgel went on his lips. 
So she was thinking that, oh, Krishna just came from another lover. So she sarcastically said, oh, you look so beautiful. You look just like Neil Rohita Rudra, that is Lord Shiva, who's a combination of red and blue because you have the mascara and the lipstick. And then she said, yeah, so I don't want to have anything to do with you. But then again, he was able to make up for his uh, so-called offense by painting her feet. Um, at first, when the painting was finished, Gurudev said, I don't want this sold in Loy Bazaar. It's only for Rasik Vaishnavas so that it, this scene can come in their heart. But then in 2007, 2007 was it? Uh, one printer, Vikash, 2005, one uh, popular Indian printer named Vikash became a disciple of Srila Gurudev and he wanted to make posters not only of Sevakunj but also of the other paintings that I had done under Srila Gurudev's direction like Manani Radha, uh, Radha Alone, Venugit. And when we asked the Manjuris, when we asked Gurudev about that at that time, he said, yes, I want this to go in everyone's heart. Even the Manjuris? Yes, even the Manjuris. Everyone must have this picture. So he wanted it mass produced. He said, even butchers, even meat eaters, even wine takers, he wanted all of them to have it for their uh, Sukritis and sanskars so that one day they would be able to meet and take shelter of bona fide guru. Also, regarding uh, how sacred the painting is and how he didn't want it at first in the 90s, how he didn't want it everywhere and anywhere. Um, for those of you who have seen Seva Kunj in person, you know that the doorway is very kind of narrow. If you want to see everybody, like the manjuris on both sides, you have to kind of almost stick your head in the kunj to see everybody. So I asked Gurudev as soon as the doors were made, I said, why did they have to be so small, the doorway? Uh, couldn't he make it bigger? So Gurudev said, you want everyone to see this? Even Brahma and Lord Shiva cannot see this? And you want to make this seen by everybody? Then it will become an ordinary thing. But then, as I mentioned, he changed his mind years later. So my understanding was that the reason he told me how careful to be and how sacred they are, are it was because he wanted me to understand their value. So let's jump then. Let's jump to uh, 1996 in Srila Gurudev's very first world tour. And as you know, the first place he went to is Holland. But then when he went to America, he went to Houston and he was staying at the home of somebody who was just meeting him for the first time. And so I went for a darshan with him and I asked him kind of, uh, what's the word? Over my head. I asked him, Gurudev, can you tell us what you do during the day in Goloka Vrindavan? So he said, 
I don't want to talk about these things. And so I got a little bit afraid and uh, sorry. But then in the next second, he said, I want to talk about Vallabhkhus Manjali. Vallabhkhus Manjali is prayers by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami for various services to Srimati Radhika. And those services take place throughout the whole 24 hour day. So then I could understand that what he was telling me in a nutshell is what he does all day because the followers of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, the followers of Rupa Goswami are also the followers of Rati Manjari, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami's form as a gopi and Rupa Manjari Shila Rupa Goswami's form as a Manjari. So who is Rupa Nuga who follows in total Shila Rupa Goswami and Sri Rupa Manjari? So by telling me that, I got his whole schedule. So let's jump now to 2010 in the Philippines. 2010, uh, he told me four verses, which you can find, they're the longest verses in the Mangalacharana section of, um, of the Gaudi Gita Good Songbook. And there, these all of these four uh, Sanskrit verses describe Krishna's appearance, his garland, his lotus eyes, his, um, his face, his peacock feather, his flute, the fact that he's the crest jewel of the cowherd boys and that he's surrounded by the gopis and worshiped by their sidelong glances. So he asked me to do four paintings when I asked him what paintings, he said they he wanted them to look general enough so that they can be used everywhere. As you can see, you probably know, you see this Kunj Kirtan practically everywhere in the internet and all that. People's icons, people's Zoom conferences. So, um, he said, you choose and then tell me what you've chosen as the various pastimes, and then I'll comment on that. So one of them was this third verse of Alapakus Manjali. And the verse by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami states, O Rati Manjari, you are the most fortunate girl in this village of Brindavan, Braj. And that's why it was you who Srimati Radhika ordered to fetch her golden waist belt, which she had um, forgotten the night before or just a, an hour before in the Kunj, because this takes place in the Shantalila during that pre-dawn time, just after the awakening of Radha and Krishna. So we sent you a link, Vasanti sent you a link, or she's going to put it now in the, um, what, chat box? Put it on the Facebook, um, Facebook live stream, which is a video made by one very nice devotee named Santanu Prabhu in India. It's a video of me speaking about uh, this painting, telling the whole story. And he's making the painting move and even Radharani's eyes open and close. 
it's really very beautiful and you can see that it's windy and some uh, flower petals are floating here and there the birds are moving so she's sending that now on the link so i won't tell the whole pastime now but how it is related to Srila Gurudev as Sri Raman Manjri uh, is described there. Also, um, Srila Gurudev is, there are eight Sakis here and also four Manjris. And Shula, I, according to me, Srila Gurudev and Srila Prabhupada are two of the Manjris in the painting. And uh, one interesting thing that makes this Rupanuga is that you see that Krishna, the gopis have sat Krishna at the feet of Srimati Radhika. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read one poem by Sripad Bhaktivedanta Madhav Maharaj, which he actually wrote in 1993 or two. And he was so pleased that I had made the painting of the four Manjaris, one of whom was, is Sri Raman Manjari. Or did I make them yet? Maybe I had just uh, completed the Seva Kunj, or maybe I was making the four Manjaris at that time. So, Madhu Maharaj was so happy that he spoke to me. And in those days, there was no, um, no digital phones that you could just copy something on. Um, so I taped it on one of those cassette tape recorders, which we had in those days. And then I uh, wrote it down uh, in my own handwriting. Because I didn't know computer at the time. So he told me that he had shown this poem to Srila Gurudev, and his face turned many colors, red and yellow, and he was in ecstasy to hear this poem. And since then, Sri Padmada Maharaj made many revisions. And then, and 2008 or 2009, he showed the poem again to Gurudev and asked if it needed any more revisions. And Gurudev said, no, keep it as it is. And he said, but I have one, one instruction. Don't tell anybody your poem while I'm still physically present. So I was fortunate that I got to hear the poem at that time and tried to learn it at that time. I'm going to read it. I'm just going to read the first verse in Sanskrit. Um, and then I'll just read the English of all the verses. Aharnisham bhavanamritayam bhavita putva vismadayasitam Loki ka guna gunagata tatta bava bardanartam tam kalpa balari kripa kada karisyasimam sri ramana manjari. Continuously absorbed in Krishna Prem, you have forgotten your sadak deha, your um, body as a sadak in this world. You are a desire creeper that increases the uh, tut tut bhava mood of the manjaris. By your mercy, you may reveal our constitutional spiritual form and ecstatic loving mood. When, oh when, will that day come when you will bestow your mercy upon me? Your attire is pink in color and your body 
is golden, like a beautiful golden plumeria. You are so attractive that even Krishna becomes bewildered by seeing you. You are Radha's eternal loving companion and your intimate service is to assist her for when she is proceeding to meet with Krishna at night at the appointed secret rendezvous. You are desire creeper for Radhika's Abhisar. When, oh when, will that day come when you will bestow your mercy upon me? You will expertly decorate Radhika, disguising her with different colorful matching clothes according to the visibility of the moon during the night. Sometimes during the white fortnight, decorating her with white ornaments and smearing camphor on her body. And on the black fortnight, dressing her in deep dark colored clothing. You conceal her by cheating the people in general for Radhika must not be seen by them and the secret place also must be kept hidden. You are a desire creeper for Radhika's Abhisar or um, journey to meet with Krishna. When or oh when will that day come when you will bestow your mercy upon me? Seeing tree stumps on the way to the meeting during the night, her face becomes completely pale. She thinks that the very persons she is concealing herself from are standing there. In other words, she thinks that the trees, the tree stumps are people. You will say, oh, Radhe, don't worry. They're only tree stumps, not people. You are a desire tree for Radhika Zabisar. When, oh, when will that day come when you will bestow your mercy upon me? Being very pleased with you, Radhika will keep her arm on your shoulder during her journey towards Krishna. You will wrap a cloth around her ankle bells so that no noise would be heard. In serving to conceal her from her superiors, you very cleverly arrange for whatever she requires at any moment. You are the desire trees, I'm sorry, you're the desire creeper for cheating and tricking her superiors. When oh when will that day come when you will bestow your mercy upon me. To test the best train, to best train and prepare, that is, her manjaris train her, her servants train her, and you'll hear it in just a second. To best train and prepare Radhika for Abhisar at night, you place thorns here and there and pour water on the ground to make it muddy. Then you assist her in practicing how to perfectly walk in the forest on a slippery, dark and rainy night. To teach her, you are a desire creeper. When oh when will that day come that you will bestow your mercy upon me. To nourish her enchanting and inconceivable man or sulkiness, her transcendental loving anger towards Krishna, you always consult with Krishna's Priyanarm Sakas like Subal and Ujval. You are a desired creeper for increasing the intensity of her sulky mood. When, oh, when will that day come that you will 
bestow your mercy upon me. Being victorious, this is next verse, being victorious in a serious debate with Krishna, the son of the king of Braj, you among Lalita's associates receive the mercy of Rasesvari Sri Radha. You are a desired creeper because of receiving her mercy. What did he do? Uh, what did she do? In his original, uh, Sri Padmada Maharaj's original poem, he wrote, but here it's sort of concealed. He wrote that Sri Raman Manjari uh, gives Radhika some arguments to say, to defeat him in the, in the battle of words. I think you've read about some of their joking word battles in um, Braj Mandala Parikrama and other places. Then the next verse. Upon hearing this new, astonishing, unprecedented and ever fresh prayer about you, kindly give me some place within the associates of Lalita Devi and make me and make me your eternal bosom friend. So Srila Gurudev ordered him to not tell this poem while he was physically present amongst us. But he said, after I depart, then you can share it. Um, and it is shared in his second volume of uh, his biography of Srila Gurudev. So, I don't know if I was allowed to tell that in such a public arena. So now let's talk about Srila Gurudev's relationship with our Srila Prabhupada, which on one hand is eternal because they serve together being in the same gun or the same group together in the kunjas. In fact, in one darshan that Srila Gurudev had with some of us Prabhupada disciples in 1990, when was that? 92, I think. Yeah, 1992. He said that Prabhupada, like uh, Rupa Manjari and Rati Manjari, are standing at the kunj, at the door of the kunj. That's Wananda Sukhada kunj. And you know why sometimes they're there to tell Krishna to go back to where he came from. And then Krishna has to fall down at the feet of the Manjaris and beg them to allow him entrance. That's also stated in uh, the prayers of Rupa Goswami and uh, Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur. So on one hand, their relationship is eternal. That's why their mission is exactly the same. They share the same mission. Srila Gurudev is a spiritual successor of Srila Prabhupada. And when he first came to the West in 1996, he said, I have come to the West for three purposes. One purpose is to take the dust of Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet on my head of all the places that he visited when he was in the West. The second reason is that he gave me the water of Hari Kata. Can you close the door? He gave me the water of Hari Kata to pour on all of his disciples and followers to uh, nourish or re-nourish the seeds that he had planted in their hearts. Some seeds were still seeds. Some seeds were already sprouted 
and become little plants, but they were drying up. And so he gave me the water of Harikata to give them and re-nourish them. And the third reason is to continue his mission. And when he arrived in Holland, he was amazed to see, when he arrived at the airport, he was amazed to see all the Madungas and the Kartals and everybody in devotional clothing, dancing, jumping up and down, seeing the results of Srila Prabhupada's uh, loving preaching. So in this world, giving some history, um, when Srila Prabhupada was still in the Grihastha ashram and the uh, after the departure of Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, right from the, their first meeting, Srila Prabhupada and Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan Keshava Goswami Maharaj, they were very intimate friends. They used to joke together, very jolly with their with each other. Very, very close friends. In 1941, when Prabhupada was still living in his Grihastha ashram, Param Gurudev came to live with him for five or six months. Then in uh, they were actually co-founders of the Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti, co-signers. There were three signers. One was Param Gurudev, one was Srila Prabhupada, and one was, I believe, Naratamananda. I don't know if he was, a, I think he was Madhusudan Maharaj at that time. So uh, then they started the Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti to continue the mission of Srila Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Then in 1946, one day when Srila Param Gurudev was giving a class in a big, big audience, Srila Prabhupada, who was still a Bhai Charan, came in from the back door and Param Gurudev instructed Srila Gurudev to go to the back and bring that personality up to the front to sit with him on stage. Srila Gurudev was surprised, but he did that. And then he heard from his Gurudev how exalted Srila Prabhupada was. And so that's when Srila Prabhupada and Srila Gurudev met each other. Gurudev said that Prabhupada was very pleased with him. And he used to tell him so many intimate things. Uh, in 19, and he explained how he served, Srila Gurudev served both his Guru Maharaj and our Srila Prabhupada. Then in 1953, Param Gurudev established two magazines on behalf of the Gaudiya Vedanta Samiti. One is called Bhagwat Patrika, and one is called Gaudiya Patrika. And those magazines are still going on to the present day. Gaudiya Patrika is in Bengali and Bhagwat Patrika is in Hindi. And Srila Param Gurudev requested Srila Prabhupada to become the editor general of both magazines. And so Srila Prabhupada accepted that and he began writing many articles for both magazines. Srila Gurudev particularly pointed out uh, Srila Prabhupada's uh, articles about from Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, where he would um, criticize those commentators of Bhagavad Gita who said that even though Krishna says in the Gita, always think of me, become my devotee, offer your homage unto me, thus you'll come to me, or um, 
I am the absolute truth from me, the entire creation flows. They interpret that to mean not me, but the impersonal Brahma Jyoti within me. And they took it that Krishna's body was a material covering of that, of that impersonal, all pervading truth. And Krishna was not actually directing uh, people to surrender to him, but to that impersonal. So Srila Prabhupada would defeat all of their arguments. He even sent one article, Gurudev said, to um, the parliament as a challenge because Dr. Radhakrishna, the president at the time, was one of those who misinterpreted Bhagavad Gita at that time, but there was no reply. And Gurudev said, how could there be a reply? They could not reply. Then in 1955, when Prabhupada became like a Varna Prastha because his family was totally opposed to the fact that he wasn't making enough money, his businesses kept failing by Krishna's arrangement. And uh, he was kicked out actually by his wife and family. And now he spent five months living in the mutt, the Keshav G. Gaudiya mutt. And then he, at that time, Srila Gurudev said that he cooked for Srila Prabhupada and assisted him in so many ways. And he gave Prabhupada the books from his library to use for his uh, translating and article writing. And then Srila Prabhupada went to Delhi and printed the first three vo volumes of Srimad Bhagavatam, that is uh, Canto 1, Volumes 1, 2, and 3, which he later on in 1965 brought with him uh, in a, one of those old tin Indian trunks, uh, brought with him to America. And in fact, he used that trunk as his first desk at his first temple of 26 Second Avenue. And in, in 1959, um, when Prabhupada was totally living away for, from his family, Srila Gurudev understood that he was staying in some dharmshala in Vrindavan. So he went to him and took all of his belongings and brought Prabhupada to Keshav Ji Gaudiya to stay there. And then he told Prabhupada that, you know, you weren't meant to be in any family or sell medicines. You're meant for spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. So when I heard that from Srila Gurudev, it reminded me of how when uh, after Krishna performed Rasalila, after he killed the Keshi demon, Narada came to him and told him, you're just enjoying Ras here without any care that your parents, Vasudeva and Devaki are suffering, being kicked by the boots in their chest, Vasudeva and Devaki, and all of the Yadu dynasty are in fear. So you have to fulfill your mission of coming now to Mathura, coming to Mathura, and Dwarka and killing all the demons. And you have all these wives to marry, all these princesses to marry. So of course that was Krishna's plan anyway, but by his human-like pastimes, Narada Muni was the uh, instrument in Krishna thinking, okay, how am I gonna go? And so he sent Yogamaya to uh, inspire Kamsa to send a Krura to Vrindavan to bring Krishna back to Mathura for a so-called, for a wrestling match with the purpose of Kamsa killing Krishna there. So similarly, Srila Gurudev was uh, the instrument in Srila Prabhupada's 
human-like pastime. So Gurudev, Gurudev told Prabhupada, so my Guru Maharaj is coming in a few days. Why don't you take sannyas? I'll also request him to request you to give you sannyas. So then Prabhupada took sannyas, pretending that he was afraid, pretending that, oh, this is what I was afraid of, that if I surrendered to Krishna, Bhagavatam says, Harisye Tadanam Sanai, I take away everything, but still I surrendered. Of course, Prabhupada was never afraid because we know that he's a eternal associate of the Lord. And actually, he wrote one letter to my god brother, Tamal Krishna Maharaj, that there's no time in my life that I've ever forgotten Krishna. So Prabhupada took sannyas then, and Parashila Pram Gurudevan requested him to give a speech on that sannyas day in English. And he requested him also to um, go to the West. So in 1965, Prabhupada came to New York and that's where I met him at 26 Second Avenue, a year after he first came. I hope you can't hear all that noise outside. I think they're mowing the lawn or something, you doing can some electrical. Can hear you what? We can hear you clearly. You can speak. We can hear you clearly. So we don't. We are not disturbed by the sound. Okay. Thanks. So then, uh, on Srila Prabhupada's request, Srila Gurudev sent him his first two murdangas. And one of those murdangas, uh, he left in New York, and the other he was going to carry to San Francisco, where he would begin his second Iskan temple. Um, he also sent him kartals. He sent him the first Radha Krishna deity. He sent him books, his Sanskrit books for translating. And then Srila Gurudev said when he came to the West, he himself came to the West in 1996 and he went to Srila Prabhupada's quarters. He saw that several of those books were in his quarters in Los Angeles because he also did his translation there. And then uh, Gurudev said that in 1967, Srila Prabhupada went back to India, ostensibly for his health, but really to give his mercy to India. And Srila Gurudev was the only one to meet him at the airport at that time. And then Srila Prabhupada requested Gurudev because Achyutananda uh, Prabhu was already there and Kirtanananda uh, traveled with Gurudev to India. So Gur Prabhupada told Gurudev, um, I'm not feeling well these days. So you please take my two disciples and do house programs with them. And Srila uh, Prabhupada would visit Gurudev also in his uh, mutt in Nabadweep. What mutt is that? Devananda Gaudiya mutt. Then in 1968, um, when Srila Trivikra Maharaj and Srila Gurudev informed Prabhupada about the disappearance of Srila Param Gurudev, Param Gurudev, Prabhupada was in Seattle at that time and he gave a lecture. When he heard the news, he gave a lecture about Param Gurudev, how he forced me to take sannyas, even though I was unwilling. 
and he recomposed the verse by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami to Sanatan Goswami saying Vairagya Yuga Bhakti Rasam Prayat Nair that he forced me to take the renounced to take to take to the path of uh, pure bhakti laced with renunciation. He's an ocean of mercy and I offer my obeisances to him. Um, and then Srila Prabhupada had all of his disciples in Seattle and I was in New York. And then he had his San Francisco temple and we all signed his condolence letter that he wrote um, and sent it to Srila Gurudev in, um, in India, saying how bereaved he was and how much separation he was feeling uh, at the departure of this beloved God brother. And then we all signed that. And if you hear the tape, the cassette tape, you can hear the, the pencils and the pens clicking. In 1977, as you know, Srila Prabhupada uh, called for Srila Gurudev and requested him to give Prabhupada samadhi with his own hands. And he put Srila Gurudev's hands in his hands and wept and asked Gurudev, please ask my god brothers to forgive me. I said so many things about them that I didn't mean that they just knew how to ring, ring bells in the temple. They didn't preach. I did that to um, increase the enthusiasm of my own disciples who needed to hear that in order to enthusiastically preach that yes, we are Srila Prabhupada's pioneers for spreading Krishna consciousness everywhere. Only us, nobody else. Um, so during the Samadhi ceremony, you can see a video of that. Srila, Srila Gurudev was guiding Srila Prabhupada's few disciples in how to do that Samadhi. And Prabhupada's Gurudev said, I wrote the Samadhi mantras with sandalwood and by the sandalwood putting on sindur and other unguents and by that sandalwood writing the samadhi mantras which are gopi mantras on Prabhupada's chest and body. Then in 1980, um, in 1980, uh, Srila Prabhupada's son wanted to take all of the ISKCON properties from ISKCON and take them into his personal, the, the possession of his family. So the ISKCON leaders requested, because his son said that Prabhupada was only a Vaishya. He never really took sannyas. So being a Vaishya, ISKCON was Prabhupada's family business and so now that his, he departed, the business goes back to the family. So at that time, Gurudev was not very well. He was having heart issues. Um, and, but when he was requested, he took every day for some time, he took a very early breakfast and then went to the court every day and proved emphatically uh, that Srila Prabhupada was, a, in fact, took sannyas and therefore he had no connection anymore with his family members because it was Srila Gurudev who actually performed the uh, sannyas ceremony, taught Prabhupada how to wear the sannyas cloths and wrap the sannyas tanda. So I know that time is ticking away. So I'm just going to, um, first I'd like to mention that one of the uh, most important ISKCON gurus, that is Sripad Radhanath Swami, 
he spoke today about two hours ago uh, or one hour ago, two hours ago on the 55 hour Zoom uh, conference organized by um, Sripad Yasodananda Prabhu and Jeshodari in London. So you can hear uh, because everything is recorded. Everything was live streamed and then recorded. You can hear um, his very beautiful glorification of Srila Gurudev's love, compassion, and exaltation. So um, during Srila Gurudev's uh, world touring, he wanted to establish and did establish Srila Prabhupada's relationship with Radha and Krishna as their maidservant. In fact, I would like to apologize right now that I was one of the main original persons who um, used to preach that Srila Prabhupada is a coward boy. And I gave my flimsy evidence, but Srila Gurudev um, gave his firm evidence that Srila Prabhupada is a one of the maidservants of Srimati Radhika, just like his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada, is, as in Prabhupada's own, own words, one of the assistants of the Mandris. Of course, he's a main Mandri. Nayana Mani Mandri, who is the personification of the um, glance of Srimati Radhika upon Krishna, upon her pastimes with Krishna, and upon this world. So one proof was that um, he took sannyas from Param, Srila Param Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Pragyan, Keshava Goswami Maharaj, and received the sannyas mantra from him. And that sannyas mantra is a mantra for gopi bhav. Those who have taken sannyas in our line know that that mantra is a mantra for gopi bhav. Also, his sannyas guru is um, Sri Vinod Manjri, the also the maid servant of Shimati Radhika. Gurudev also pointed to the fact that. Uh, every day before every class, Srila Prabhupada would chant Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Kunja Bihari and only a manjari could sing that song because the uh, coward boys, even the Priya Narmsakas, the most uh, elevated and intimate of the Priyanarm Sakas have no access into the Kunj. And they have nothing to do with Kunja Bihari. Then also, who, who are Srila Prabhupada's commentators in all of his books? The Rupanuga Acharyas who are all maidservants, like Srila Viswanath Chakrabarti Thakur, whose songs did, did he sing? Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, that is Kamala Manjri. Uh, Gora Pahun Nabhaji na Namainu, Srila Naratam Das Thakur's songs. Lochan Das Thakur. So his Guru Parampara are all manjaris, all the way up to uh, Srila Rupa Goswami. In the beginning of his uh, nectar of devotion, and I'm going to close in a minute because Visanti is holding up a cane and she's ready to pull me away by the neck. So, 
Uh, and I'm coming to my end of the hour. Um, where am I? Yes. So at the beginning of his introduction to uh, Nectar of Instruction, Srila Prabhupada begins, Nectar of Instruction is by Rupa Goswami. He said, Srila Rupa Goswami is the superintendent of the Hare Krishna movement. And therefore, and we are all followers of Rupa Goswami. Rupa and Sanatan are the greatest servants of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Srila Prabhupada is saying, and the greatest servants of Srimati Radhika. And we all want to follow in their footsteps. And then he quoted Naratam Das Thakur's prayer in the beginning of his Nectar of Instruction. Rupa Raghunatha Pade Hoi Beakuti Kabi Hami Bhubhaja Boshe Jugala Pidati When will I attain the mercy of Sri Rupa and Raghunath so that I can understand the books of the Goswamis and thus be able to understand the conjugal love of Radha and Krishna. Srila Gurudev said, sometimes people say that I'm different from Srila Prabhupada. But how am I different? My nose is shaped differently. He's tall, he's short, and I'm tall. And we use sometimes different words, but the mission is the same. The meaning is the same. He says, don't drink dirty water. And I say, drink clean water. So much difference, no difference. Just like in the Upadesh Amrita, Gurudev is giving lectures on uh, Upadesh Amrit in Badger and other places, England. And the devotee would read from Prabhupada's uh, translations and purports, and then Gurudev would further comment. And so he said, just like Shilap our Srila Prabhupada, he took the, how many, 12 verses of Rupa Goswami's verses, which is like nothing, it's so short. It's just a few pages. And he made a hundred pages out of it. Different word, using different words and more words, but just to clarify and explain. So I am also using different words Otherwise, this is so interesting to me when he said this, because I had the fortune to accompany him on 95% of his world touring. So in Badger in 1997, uh, he said, oh, it slipped me. He said, if I use the same exact words that Prabhupada used, again, you would misunderstand him. So I'm using different words to help clarify. So that gives an atomic inkling of their relationship philosophically. Srila Prabhupada, uh, when in his in his book Pinnacle of Devotion, we would read from Prabhupada's Chaitanya Charitamrita to show what um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission actually is: to give uh, Premaras Niryas Kodi Te Aswadan. Raga Marga Bhakti Loke Kodi Te Pracharan, that Krishna came to taste the love of Srimati Radhika, uh, the essence of the love, and um, to give Raga Marga Bhakti or Raga Nuga Bhakti, and more specifically, Rupa Nuga Bhakti. So I'm going to end there. My time is up. Thank you very much. And again, if you go to that link, that uh, Vasanti sent, you sent it? She put it on the, on the Facebook live stream. Um, then you can see the, the painting, uh, Kunj Kirtan turning into a little bit of a video and uh, the whole story. Thank you. Panchako Bhutru Vyashtra Kribisandu Bhyevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namo Namaha. Thank you so much. Uh, so so beautiful it um it looked like i went uh, on a journey how you were describing er everything i uh, it looked like i went to the journey and it, uh, i was experiencing there what you were saying so beautiful 
my beautiful. Um, um, that uh, I have a question. Um, you said uh, in in one of your painting, uh, you can see Shri Gurudev and Prabhupada. But uh, which one is Prabhupada? To me, he's um, one? this one. I cannot see that. So you can't see. Uh, can you get a one of the small G clays? What? Oh. Asante is trying to figure it out how to send that link. It's okay. on Instagram. All right. So, well, if you get one of those small G clays, I could hold it up right here. Um, unless you want to, yeah, you can move the. All right. So here, I don't know if you can see the painting well, can you? I can see that. This is, to me, this is Srila Prabhupada. And okay. to me, this is Srila Gurudev. And this is Rati Manjari and Rupa Manjari, Lalita Vishaka, Chitra Champakalata, Induleka Tungavidya, uh, Sudevi Rangadevi. Right. And guess, and I have an announcement too. I have an announcement which is that we have G clays of this painting and they're, um, they're a little bit expensive, but anybody who orders any G clay of any size today can get 50% off it, which is like a real steal. And if you go to, uh, what was that? Um, bhaktiart.net, that website, that's where they have the prices and the sizes. So today and only today, if anybody puts in an order for one of the G clays, then uh, Vasanti gave me the permission to say 50% off. This is very great to hear. So, uh, oh, yes, uh, she sent me the link eh? for, uh, for ordering. Yes, yeah, we will you send the link. She sent it. I think so. Huh? Yes, we we yes. can find the link. Yeah, we will, we will find send it to link. everyone. Okay, and I will send it to everyone. <laughs> okay. Nice. It's so special to hear everything. Uh, also about Raman Manjiri, huh? the relation huh? between Shila Guru and Shwami Maharaj. It's very very great to hear all these things. Mm -hmm. I, I it felt like I want to hear more and more. I cannot stop hearing. <laughs> and. Uh, I, I remember um, when you in uh, once when you were in Holland, then uh, Sheila Gurudev after uh, I decorated um, his asan and also uh, the hall. And one I remember time, that. I remember your decorations. Yes, and then one time I was decorating his uh, vyasas and I put their parrots. Had hey, the a green one, and uh, uh, Gurudev liked it so much. And then he. After uh, the last day, I think he took the parrot and he gave it to you, the green one, which you are using oh. your He oh. gave it to you, that I remember because he said uh, you should use this in your painting. And each time when I'm seeing your painting, I'm seeing that parrot, uh, the thing. Amazing. But, uh, and I, so I remember if you also creepers also, he collected uh, some of the um, decoration and he gave it also to you. That I oh. remember also to uh, as a sample. <laughs> oh. Yes. So, so I guess then it was transported to uh, transported to Goloka Vrindavan. I don't know. I, I know that he gave it, he took it away and it was meant for you. Amazing. <laughs> yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I didn't even remember that. Okay. Okay. Yes. So thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored to be with the yes, and all your um, uh, devotees and other devotees. Yes. And, uh, the girls sang so nice. Just like Bengali brahmacharis, all of them. <laughs> Your um, one thing I want to add also is um, because there are so many new people who never met uh, you, but uh, they are all having uh, that seva kund, especially that seva kund painting and other paintings of you in their house, and they are doing puja and arti. So it's very wow. And those uh, many of them, they are here. Uh, see. Wow. Um, do you know about my memoir, Artists, The Art of Spiritual Life? Yeah. Yes, I think we can contact with Santi Didi and yes. then uh, can somebody get it in Holland? Then we will distribute it in Holland also. 
Yeah, because they actually, um, it's very expensive to send from America, mm -hmm. but from India, it's relatively cheap. So we're just now, we're totally out in really? India, but just now, a couple of days ago, we sent the uh, file to the printer again for reprinting. Yeah. So in a few weeks, it should be ready. And then um, they can send that from Vrindavan. And then I'd love to get to know all the devotees through the book because it tells about how I met Prabhupada and how he trained us in the philosophy and the paintings and how the chastisements I got in the letters and and, and the history of the movement and the history of the BBT also is all there. Very great that everything is there to us and then everyone can um, read that. It's very um, beneficial for everyone. I'm happy to hear that everything is uh, there to uh, record it actually in that way. In the book. <laughs> we will definitely distribute yeah, it. Yeah, we will distribute it to everyone. So when uh, the printings are uh, ready, then uh, we will contact with Visanti Didi. Okay, that sounds fabulous. Thank and you. I hope, and I hope you will one time come also to Holland. Yeah. yeah. All the devotees and who are everyone will meet for with you. you and, uh, yeah, I love all the Holland devotees. I remember them so well.